that. Okay. Uh, for our project, we did problem 15-79, which is a two-part problem. First part involving impulse, impulse and momentum, and the second part involving work and energy. The problem description uh, described a ball weighing 2 kilograms traveling horizontally with a velocity of 10 meters per second, um, while a 6 kilogram box slid down an incline of 20 degrees with a velocity of one, meters per sec one meter per second. Uh, the first part of the problem asks for us to solve for the velocities of the ball and the block immediately after they collide. In order to do so, in order to do this, we uh, created a uh, coordinate system with the positive x pointing up the, up the ramp and the y being perpendicular up from that. Uh, we broke the velocity of A into components using uh, geometry. Since the uh, A is horizontal, it's parallel with the bottom of this ramp. And since VAX uh, is pointing up the ramp, it's parallel with the incline of the ramp, which means that the angle between the two has to be the same, so they're both 20 degrees. We, realized, we, we wanted to solve first um, the velocities in the x-direction, but we realized we needed two equations because we had two unknowns, the velocity of x of a and the velocity of x of b. Um, so we, the first equation we decided to use was conservation of momentum in the x-direction. So we took the uh, mass of a times its initial velocity in the x-direction plus the mass of b times the initial velocity in the x-direction, uh, and that's set equal to the mass of A times the final velocity in the x-direction uh, plus the mass of B times its final velocity in the x-direction. Um, as you can see here, we substituted in the numbers, uh, 2 kilograms, and then 10 times the cosine of 20 degrees, which you get from the geometry of this part, plus 6 times negative 1, because this is actually moving in the opposite x-direction and set that equal to 2 times the velocity, uh, the final velocity in the x-direction for A plus 6 times the final velocity in the x-direction for B. So we ended up getting that it was 2 times the final velocity in A plus 6 times the final velocity of B equals to 12.7939 meters per second. And to simplify that, we divided both sides by 2. And we got final velocity of A plus 3 times the final velocity of B in the x-direction equals to 6.39693 meters per second. The second equation we used was the coefficient of restitution. Uh, in the problem statement, you're given that the coefficient of restitution equals to 0 0.6. Um, the one important thing to recognize in using the coefficient of restitution equation is that it only relates to velocities that are uh, along the line of impact, which is in this case, you can see the x's are actually make the impact, and that the velocities along the y are going to be conserved because uh, there's no impulse in that direction. So what we did is we took we set e equals to final velocity in the x direction of b minus um, the final velocity of a in the x direction over the initial velocity of a in the x direction minus the initial velocity of b in the x direction. And we know these values, so we plug these in and uh, multiply both sides by this equation. Um, and we end up getting that the final velocity of b in the x direction minus the final velocity of a in the x direction equals to 0 0.6 times 10 uh, cosine of 20 uh, plus 1, as the negatives cancel out. And then we ended up getting that that equals to um, the final velocity of B in the x-direction minus the final velocity of A in the x-direction equals to 6.23816 meters per second. To solve for uh, the final velocity uh, in the x-direction for A and the final velocity in the x-direction for B, use a system of equations uh, relating the equation we found for the coefficient of restitution and the conservation of momentum. So using setting these up as a system of equations, you end up solving that final velocity in the x direction of A is equal to negative 
uh, 0 0.0794 meters per second and that the final velocity for B in the extraction is 3.1588 meters per second. Then to solve for the Y uh, component of the collision, you first recognize that the um, B has no Y component, so these cancel out. And then since it's on the line, or it's perpendicular to the line of action, the collision, the momentum is conserved, so the initial velocity in the y direction equals the final velocity in the y direction, which using the geometry and the numbers from above, you know that it's 10 meters per second times sine of 20 degrees, which equals to negative uh, 3.4202 meters per second. Then to solve for the final velocity uh, for in the a direction, you take the final velocity in the x direction and square that, plus the final velocity in the y direction and square that, and take the square root of that whole thing. And then you know that final velocity in, of b is equal to the um, final velocity in the x direction because there is no y component. So your final answers are the, the final velocity of a is equal to 4.602 meters per second and the final velocity of B is equal to 3.1588 meters per second. The second part of the problem asks us to find the distance that the block slides back up the ramp after the initial impact. To find the distance, we realize that this is just going to turn into a work energy problem. We started by drawing the free body diagram of the forces acting on the block right after impacts. And we should find both the force of friction and the normal force acting on the block. To find the normal force, what we did, we really just found the sum of the forces in the y direction, which is negative mass of the block, which is 6, times gravity, times the sine of 20, plus the normal force, which all equals 0. After finding the normal force equal to 55.31 newtons, and knowing that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.4, we can find the force of friction equal to 0.4 times 55.31. After knowing the force of friction, we can apply the principle of work and energy. The principle of work and energy says that the kinetic energy plus the sum of work done from 1 to 2 is equal to the final kinetic energy after the block has slid up the rim. T1 is equal to 1 half times the mass of the block times the velocity of the block right after impacts which is equal to 1 half times 6 times 3.1588 squared. The sum of the work done on the block is equal to really to the forces acting on the block times its distance. So we have negative 6 times gravity times the sine of 20 times d minus 0.4 times 55.31 times d. And finally, T2 is equal to one half the mass of the block times the velocity of the block after it is slid to its highest point. We know by looking back at our, one of our free body diagrams that when the block is slid all the way up the ramp, the velocity is going to be zero. So we know that T2 is equal to zero. So with all this figured out, we can now apply the equation. We have 1 half times 6 times 3.1588 squared minus 6 times 9.81 times 20 times the distance minus 0.4 times 55.31 times the distance all equal to 0. After solving that equation, we can find that the distance the block slides back up the ramp after the impact will be 0.708 meters.